Hi there. If you're dealing with anxiety, this video is for you. I'm going to teach you a process that you can use to develop more awareness of the specific ways that you hold tension in your body when you get anxious. Because even if you can't change the circumstances of your life overnight, you can learn how to respond in new ways when you get anxious. My name is Seth Dellinger. I am a certified Feldenkrais practitioner based in Washington, DC. And beyond what I'm gonna teach you today in this video, I would be happy to give you some one-on-one -on -one support if that would be helpful. There is a link below this video that you can use to book a free call with me. Okay, so one of the most common ways that people embody their anxiety is by holding the breath. Now, this is one of three common bodily reactions to anxiety that I already outlined in a previous video. So I'm definitely going to encourage you to watch that along with this one because they will reinforce each other. But in this video, we are going to focus directly on that common habit of holding the breath because in fact, each person does this slightly differently. Holding the breath, of course, it's not a bad thing if you want to swim underwater. The problem with the breath hold that happens when we get anxious is that it generally also involves a sort of tensing up in the body. And again, we each do that in a particular way. So that's what we're going to find out today. I also have another video which explains more in depth this connection between excessive muscular effort and holding the breath. You can check that out as well. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to lie on the floor on your back. And I'm going to guide you through a step-by-step -step process. But first, let's just get a visual reference for something that we're going to do on the floor. So if you now interlace your fingers like this, and you just have them loose in a kind of dome-like shape, and then as if you were going to crack your fingers, you sort of flatten it down like that, and then just let your hands come back to the original position, flatten it down. This simulates the movement of your diaphragm. And we'll make use of this again on the floor, but if you like, just as you breathe, now when you breathe in, you make that movement of flattening downwards, and then as you exhale, you let your hands come like that. And these are the two shapes that your diaphragm makes when you're breathing. And we'll go over that again when you're lying on your back, but I just wanted you to see the hand movement because when you hold your breath, of course you stop the movement of the diaphragm. But even when you just partially hold your breath and you create different tensions in your body, there's things that you might do that might restrict that up and down movement of your diaphragm, which of course impacts your breathing and it's contributing to this feeling of anxiety that you may be experiencing. Okay, so now you can go ahead and lie down on the floor on your back. If you need any head supports, you can find those, but just use a little bit, not anything too excessive. And I'll invite you to lengthen your legs out on the floor, unless that's not comfortable for you, in which case you can bend your knees and stand your feet. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually work with deliberately holding the breath, but we're going to be very interested in observing what happens throughout the body in the moment of the breath hold because probably you're going to notice some particular habits and patterns. And I'm gonna walk you through the process just for a few minutes here, but what I can tell you is it's possible to really slow this way down. And so once you understand the process from this video, you might want to investigate further. And one way you might do that is by exploring the process in different positions. So. We're just going to work lying on the back, and hopefully you're lying down by now and you're just allowing yourself to settle. But again, in the future, 
you could follow the same process. You could try it lying on the belly. You could try it lying on the side and you could try it in sitting. And of course, it's going to be a different experience in each position. And so there's value in taking this further, but let's just keep it simple today. You're lying on your back. The breath is flowing. And before we manipulate the breath, just take a moment to observe your body. So feel the length of your left leg. The whole distance from your left heel up into your left hip joint in the left side of your groin. And just feel the quality of how your left leg rests. Does it seem to fully accept the weight of the floor? And then turn your attention to your right leg. And compared to your left leg, does your right leg feel more relaxed, a little less relaxed? And how do you sense the length of your right leg? If you pay close attention, it may feel like one of your legs is slightly longer than the other one. And another way to compare the feeling in the two legs, especially if your legs are long, is to notice how they connect to the floor. So is there space behind the knees? And if one leg feels longer than the other, it's likely that you'll have a sense of one knee being a little closer to the floor and the other one being a little further away. Now, of course, if you were to lift your knee off of the floor, that would involve muscular work. You're just lying here, but if one knee is in fact a little lifted, perhaps there is a muscular contraction in that leg that isn't taking place on the other side. And so this is what we're beginning to notice. Where are there maybe areas of tension in the body? Okay, so now bring your attention to your spine. Just move your attention slowly from the bottom of your spine upwards. Sense where you feel your back connected to the floor and when there might be a space, for example, under the low back, behind your neck. And feel each of your two shoulder blades. Once again, perhaps one shoulder rests more easily than the other. And if one shoulder is a little lifted or one shoulder feels closer to the floor, also just notice, does there seem to be a little tension around one shoulder and one side of the neck that isn't present on the other side? Compare how each of your arms rest on the floor. You might find space underneath the wrists. And again, maybe more on one side of the body. So as you notice the lengths of your limbs and the relationships to the floor, also just ask if these characteristics, do they reflect a sense of certain places being a little more tense or a little more relaxed compared to others? And now just follow the movement of your breath. When you inhale, what moves? Notice if there's movement in your belly, the chest. And now, as we were just speaking about, can you imagine the movement of your diaphragm? If you like, you can hold your fingers in front of your face, interlace the fingers and sort of press them down in the direction of your feet as you inhale and then make that dome shape again. Just once or twice to get the visual image, but then you could rest your hands on your lowest ribs in the front and just imagine the diaphragm, which attaches all around front to back at the bottom of your ribs and imagine how it moves downwards with each in-breath. And this will be simpler if the belly is allowed to expand. 
Maybe you can even imagine your pubic bone gently reaching down away from your head with each in-breath. So now you have a kind of a basic picture of your body. You can think of yourself as five lines, a line for each leg, a line for each of your two arms and the line of your spine. And you imagine that downward movement of the diaphragm with each in-breath. But now, when you breathe in at the top of your inhalation, pause, hold the breath there. Just hold it for a few seconds and then let the breath flow again. But you're going to continue doing this. If it doesn't feel comfortable to hold the breath after every single inhalation, you can do it every other time. But notice what goes on throughout the body in the moment that you hold your breath. Do you feel that there's some place in your body where you get shorter? Or some space that contracts and gets smaller? Now, if that happens right now, it's fine. You're just observing it. Perhaps something happens in your belly. Or perhaps something happens in your throat. And you can also pay attention to that moment of letting go of the breath hold. So when you release the breath, is there some place in your body that lets go? The throat and the belly, which I already mentioned, they're very intimately tied into your breathing apparatus. But some people will notice when they hold the breath that attention might appear in one foot or in one hand. Or maybe something happens to the expression in your face. There's a tightening in the forehead or in the corners of the mouth. So just be curious. And again, for any of these areas, when you feel that there might be some slight contraction, and it, it might be slight, it might be a subtle thing. If you keep paying attention, when you feel something in the belly or the throat or somewhere else, is it more on one side? Is it the right side of the throat or is it the left side of the throat? Maybe something happens to your tongue. Okay, just breathe again normally in and out. Just notice if anything feels different after exploring this breath hold for a moment. And then a similar idea, begin to hold the breath at the end of the exhale just for a few seconds and then release it. And here, of course, the lungs are mostly emptied out. So it's a different shape in your chest. And notice when you stop the breath, do you also tighten or contract somewhere in your body? Again, if you don't want to stop the breath with every single exhale, it's fine, but keep coming back to it. And if you're having trouble pinpointing areas of tension, just keep shifting your attention to different places. So you could, for example, pay attention to your right shoulder. What happens with your right shoulder in the moment that you breathe out and stop the breath? Does it slightly change positions? After a couple of breaths, move your attention over to your left shoulder. And for a few more breaths, just notice where your attention wants to go. 
And don't forget that in the moment that you allow the breath to flow again, maybe you feel a letting go somewhere. Another place to get curious about is the roof of your mouth. Is the roof of your mouth perhaps harden? Can you hold the breath? Okay. Again, allow the breath to flow without holding it. And just come back to sensing the five lines of your body, the legs, the arms, the spine. Again, imagine the movement of the diaphragm downwards with each in-breath and allowing the belly to move forward pubic bone maybe reaching a little down. Imagine how it domes up into the bottom of your rib cage when you breathe out. And now breathe in and hold the breath momentarily. And then breathe out. And after the out breath, again, hold the breath briefly. And just notice when you hold the breath after the inhale, how that feels. And how does that compare with the other breath hold after the exhale? You might feel that it's simpler for you to hold the breath in one of those two situations. And then a different question, but also very important is, does one of those two ways of holding the breath feel more familiar to you? Because when we hold the breath unconsciously, some of us tend to do it more after breathing in and others more after breathing out. And then let go, just allow the breath to move. And now if your legs are long, I'll suggest bend your knees and stand your feet. And now just do a gentle movement of rocking your pelvis up and down the floor. When the pelvis rolls down in the direction of your feet, especially pay attention to the idea of reaching your pubic bone down and back towards the floor. And then you roll the pelvis up in the direction of your head. You'll feel your low back flattening a little bit. Just go back and forth here gently. It doesn't have to be a large movement. If you like, you can coordinate this with your breathing. But feel especially on that movement downwards that the belly could really expand and open. Okay. And then Rest your pelvis, keep the feet standing. And notice again, the length of your spine. Just imagine the distance from the bottom of your pelvis all the way up to the top of your head. And track your breathing. And now I'm gonna ask you to do a tiny, tiny movement. It's a movement that you could do you could make a larger movement, but, but please do this very small. Just think of your shoulders floating a little upwards towards your ears. Don't do a lot and then let go. But after a moment, do that again. And notice when you begin to shrug your shoulders up towards your ears, even if it's just a tiny bit, does it change the feeling of the length of your spine? And also notice what happens to the quality of your breathing in that moment. So if you float your shoulders a little up towards your ears and sort of stay there, it's likely that you'll feel, it's like the head gets pulled down a little bit and the spine feels shorter and the breath may be a little bit restricted here. So now let go of that again. Now, please have your arms on the floor next to you and make another very small movement. Think of reaching your elbows, 
not your hands. Think of your elbows reaching down away from your head just a little bit and then let go. But see if thinking of reaching the elbows and they might slide a tiny bit on the floor. You can feel that the shoulder blades too can come down your back a little bit, just slightly away from your ears. And if you give maybe the tiniest little push with your feet, see if that movement can kind of inspire a sense of lengthening straight upwards through the spine, like you were pushing something at the top of your head. Again, this can be mostly in the imagination, but it's like the elbows reach down and the top of the head reaches up. And if you make that small movement for just a moment, what happens with your breathing there? Okay, now rest everything. But now go back to what you were doing earlier. Breathe in and pause the breath and then breathe out. And again, pause the breath. But each time you stop the breath and each time you release the breath, pay attention to your shoulders. And do they make a movement? Do they creep up towards your ears at all? Or do they perhaps have the possibility of slightly shifting down and away? Okay, so the last thing we're going to do now is just to return to breathing in and stopping the breath for a moment and then breathing out and again stopping the breath. And this time we're going to look for a very smooth and even controlled way of bringing the breath to a stop and then releasing it again. And I'm going to give you two suggestions of how to do that. The first is to just imagine that even when you stop the breath, the spine stays long. And what you were just doing with this idea of the elbows reaching a little downwards, that might help if you feel that you have a tendency to shrug the shoulders upwards when you pause the breath. But just simply imagining that the spine is long or even that it lengthens in the moment that the breath stops might help you to do that a little simpler. And try not to stop the breath abruptly, but it's more like if you're driving and you come towards the red light, but you see it off in the distance and you slowly ease the brakes. And then when the light turns green, you slowly press on the gas and you ease your way back into moving down the road. Maintaining this idea of a long spine, now can you remember that movement of your diaphragm? And as you breathe in, that dome flattening downwards, and as you breathe up, the dome moves upwards. And now if you felt like you were tightening in the throat or tightening in the belly or tightening somewhere else, can you imagine that it's possible to hold the breath a different way simply by pausing the movement of your diaphragm? So, Think about how that movement of the diaphragm down pulls the air in. And then when the diaphragm is flattened down, just think of holding the diaphragm just for a moment. But maybe you don't need to hold anywhere else. And then as the breath releases, imagine it doming up. And then again, think of just very gently keeping the diaphragm in that dome shape for a moment going back and forth, but really thinking that all you're doing is pausing the diaphragm and then allowing it to move again.
And what I've led you through here, it might just be a beginning for you. Maybe you feel that there are still places that want to tense, but you can revisit this process. And as I mentioned, you can try it lying on the belly, lying on the side or sitting up. Each of those positions will highlight different sensations. But hopefully you've been able to let go of some of that tension and maybe you got some insight into which particular places in your body tend to volunteer first when you want to tighten and feel that tension. And of course, over time, we want to learn how to eliminate those habits. But even if you just find yourself going through your day and you suddenly tense, oh, I tensed in the left side of my neck. Well, now I can carry around an image of keeping length through the left side of my neck, length through the whole spine. And that's the kind of thing that I can incorporate to give myself a little more freedom from the body pattern of anxiety. So I encourage you to keep playing with this. You can stay on the floor or you can move to other positions as I've suggested and do a little more of this process. But we'll wrap up this video for now. And again, if you'd like, any direct guidance, please use the link below the video to get in touch. So thanks for watching the video. Thanks for trying this out. Take care and see you next time.